561 in progress. Seven in progress. I. complete. Five fifty seven in progress.
557 in progress. Five fifty seven complete. Five fifteen in progress. Five fifty seven complete.
515 complete. Five sixteen in progress. Five thirty in progress. Five.
516 complete. Five thirty complete.
Tell me, Victor, tell me honestly, are you a human being or a robot? Huh? Right? Or are you sure? Have you checked? Because it seems to me you have a set of programmed commands instead of brains in your head. Ever consider showing a little bit of flexibility? Just a little bit, huh? Ever consider that selling butter and selling gasoline isn't the same thing? I... Well, listen... Listen to me, Victor. Listen to me a second before your tiny electrical brains run out of batteries. When you sell him butter, you sell him a delicious breakfast. A person can live without a delicious breakfast. Yes, most people in this fucking town haven't even heard of a delicious breakfast. When you sell him butter, he's in a position to bargain. Because if he doesn't have butter, he'll smear his toast with clay, and by God, I swear he will eat it with no less pleasure. But when you sell him gasoline, Victor, when you sell him gasoline, you sell him his business. You sell him the entire meaning of his existence. Because, Victor, if he doesn't have gasoline, he'll have to shut down his gas station. And if he closes his gas station, he won't have butter or toast on the table. And in fact, he won't even have a fucking table. Because his creditors will take away his whole fucking house. And a man needs a fucking house, so that he can have a place to put his fucking table. You got the logic, right? Now see if you can digest it with your fucking electrodes or whatever you usually think with and call me back when you come to an agreement on the price. Ah, you're already here. I'm sorry, Jack. It's a busy time of year. I gotta sit by the phone all day. I can call you Jack, right? Then why am I asking? I'm already calling you Jack. <laughs> Let's sit down. We could go to the bar, by the way. I'm waiting for a call, but I could... It's fine here. You sure? Well, as you like. That's what I love about sharp wood. Even if I forget to put the beer in the refrigerator, it'll still be cold. Here, you can help yourself. Hmm, doesn't look like beer, does it? Well, what is it? The infamous smelly soup? You should try it. Go on. Try it, try it. Don't be squeamish. Half of Sharpwood eats that soup every day. <laughs> no one's dead yet. <laughs> Not from the soup, anyway. Now I see. Hmm? Now I see why you'd say that anyone who lives on this soup would try to get out of here. Well, yes, but... Uh... But most of them stay. What do you think keeps them here? Family? Friends? Friends? But there's nothing easier than making friends. When did you arrive in Sharpwood? About ten weeks ago? Or was it eight? And look, you're already surrounded by friends. No, no, it's not friends. It's the enemies. Ask anyone in the city. Ask a poor man. Ask a rich man. Of course, if you can find a rich man. They all have them. Every one of them has a neighbor they can't stand. Well, how can you leave Sharpwood and allow your enemy to go on without you? So he could plant a cherry tree in your backyard? So he, not you, could buy drugs on discount? So he could grab a nice plot of land in the cemetery? No, no, no one can allow this. The enemy must be exhausted if it takes you your whole life. With the enemy, you need to fight to the last. Once you have an enemy, you're doomed. You can't think straight. Old Sheriff Wells was doomed. He couldn't stand drug dealers. I myself don't care care for them, but Wells didn't count them as people at all, despised them more than murderers and rapists, and as soon as those fucking neckties appeared in the city, he knew right away that they were his enemies. Enemies which he must overcome, you see? And even if by some miracle he succeeded, what next? What other enemies would he have invented? And the performance we arranged for him that night? He had no reason to believe that there were ties hiding in that house. But one phone call, from this phone here, by the way, and he rushes off into the night to God knows where. You know what happened next. He threw himself into a hail of bullets, got two young cops killed too, though they had absolutely nothing to do with it. Sheriff Wells invented his enemies, and he paid for them dearly. So the policeman had to pay for doing police work. What? Jack, come on. I know we need the police. Of course we need them. 
There was a case here recently, a month before you got here, maybe less. A fellow named Rocco, he was a butcher here. His old mother, Bertha, went missing. And Bertha had either Alzheimer's or old age dementia, or is it the same thing? I, anyway, poor Bertha always forgot everything. Couldn't even recognize Rocco half the time. And then suddenly, she disappeared somewhere. So, what did our Rocco decide? Our Rocco decided that his mother was kidnapped by Eves Menke, another local butcher, his competitor, so to speak. No, oh, just think, a man finds his mother missing, his old sick mother who can't remember her way to the toilet, and the first idea that comes into his head, his competitor kidnapped her. He watched too many movies, I guess. So what did Rocco do? Rocco picked up the hammer, went to Eve's Menke's house, cracked open his skull, then broke his brother's skull, then broke his father's skull, then went down to their basement shouting, Mom, I've come to save you. And the basement was empty. Of course it's fucking empty. And there he is, standing there. Goes back home, covered in blood, hammer in hand, and his mother is there, sitting in her armchair, quietly knitting. Walked around in the woods all day, then came back home. Doesn't even remember a thing about it. Now Rocco will be in prison for the rest of his life. But if he just called the police, if the cops had combed the forest looking for poor Bertha, nothing would have happened. So of course we need the police. Never imagine, Jack, that I think the police is my enemy. I don't invent enemies for myself. I won't repeat the old sheriff's mistakes. Unlike the new sheriff. What, you arranging a special performance for her, too? I could, of course, but what happens after that? Marino says that after Gail Greenberg's death, there's no first deputy in the department. So if the sheriff suddenly dies, anyone might take her place. And I do not need anyone. I need you. I'm sorry? You're working in the sheriff's department, unofficially, right? I think it's time to formalize your status. First deputy sheriff. It's a good start, huh? Why would Lily formally appoint me as first deputy? You're not listening to me at all, Jack. Lily invented an enemy for herself and will do anything if it means she can get even with her enemy. Believe me, run the ties out of Sharpwood and you'll get your post. She wouldn't think for a second. I'm not sure she... Uh... Just think, Jack, just think! The ties didn't just flood the city with drugs. Oh, no, that would not be enough. The ties killed her precious Sheriff Wells. Well, that's what she believes anyway. But would they stop at that? Oh, no. The ties killed Gail Greenberg. And was that enough? Not at all. Now the ties had also killed her champion, Captain Carter. As far as I know, Jack, you made sure poor Lily thought as much. You can be sure, Jack. Hatred for her enemy has all but blinded our sheriff. Like her predecessor. Like her predecessor's predecessor. Consider this a Sharpwood tradition. Suppose she agrees. Although I do not really believe she will, then I'll still need to deliver and take out these ties. Is that a problem? I thought you were an experienced cop. I don't even know where their headquarters are. But I do. I learned a lot from our distinguished young student, Arthur Sherman. The scholar couldn't be held in isolation without books. He traded all the valuable secrets of the insidious neckties for the Viscount de Bragelone. Can you imagine? <laughs> Even if I can. Oh, that must be Victor. Don't worry, Jack. She'll agree. You'll see. She'll agree without hesitation. <laughs> Call me when you made the deal. Just don't leave it too long. Here, little souvenir from Freebird. Hello. What? Why does he need so much? It doesn't matter how much he's willing to pay. It's physically impossible at that time. 